The topic today for Breathe Better 101 is managing lung secretions, and it's part of the pulmonary rehab educational series for Mullen Health. Right. And we, I think this could really be helpful because most people with chronic lung disease have some times at least that uh, junk in their lungs uh, is, is an issue. And managing this situation better can help you have better health and a better life. So let's see what we can do. So why do people cough up phlegm? Uh, most of us, if we don't have chronic lung disease at all, uh, we think this, that uh, we don't have any mucus at all unless we're sick. But it's normal to have mucus in your lungs. So that comes as a surprise to a lot of people. Normal lungs, though, make a microscopically thin layer of water and mucus lining the airways. And please take a look at those graphics. Uh, both of them uh, will show you uh, what uh, this graphically, uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, if you think about it, um, lungs uh, are remarkably se uh, sensitive. They're very, very delicate. They've got a big job to do uh, to get just the right amount of oxygen in and the right amount of carbon dioxide out of the blood. That all happens to has to happen in the lungs in very, very delicate tissue. Um, uh, we don't want to get, nature doesn't want any germs or anything but just air to get into those lungs. And um, of course, there's everything in the air uh, that, that should stay out. So this is how that, uh, that stuff is filtered out. Germs and dirt stick to that thin, microscopically thin layer of mucus and little tiny cilia. And you see what looks like hairs, especially in the up higher graphic. Thanks, Saj. Uh, those are called cilia, which just means hairs. They are really, really, really tiny. They won't show up on just a normal microscope. Only They're only visible with an electron microscope, but they have a huge job. They have to mu move that mucus so that, the, so that it flows out of the lungs upward into the uh, back of your throat, into your pharynx, in such tiny amounts that you're not even aware of it. It dissolves in the saliva. And where's that go? You swallow it down into the stomach, which has acid in it to digest food. It digests all that dirt, all those germs, if it's not overwhelming amounts. And if everything's working right, that keeps you from getting plugged up with junk and getting infected all the time with those germs. But if we irritate those airways, we make extra and thicker mucus. Smoking damages those cilia in many cases, and uh, then that stuff gets stuck. The mucus is too thick to flow. It's too filled up with all the stuff it's supposed to get rid of. The cilia aren't moving it, and everything stays down there and plugs it up, uh, plugs you up. Uh, we can cough. Maybe some of it comes up, but often we can't get it all up, and that makes it a problem. And, and so Ed mentions here on the slide, smoking damages the cilia, <clears throat> and that's exactly right. So common problem when people stop smoking is that they find after a couple of days that it's harder for them to breathe and they have this really thick mucus and and they think it's they're feeling worse. They're breathing worse. They feel, oh, I should just go back smoking. I felt better. But that what that is is that your lungs are starting to to get back to business. The cilia in your hair are starting to move. They're starting to get up and, and go with the flow. And it's really just trying to get all of that old um, dirt and soot, really, that smoke and the debris out of the lungs. That's why you feel worse and you feel like you're, um, you're coughing up a lot more secretions is because everything is starting to rev back up again and try to get back to, to, to baseline function. So it's trying to get that stuff out of your lungs. And so if you can just bear with it the next few days while you're really coughing up and you're spitting up a lot of mucus and you're clearing things up and you're feeling sort of crummy, you'll feel a lot much, uh, a lot better at the end of that. Right. We're going to go into a little more detail about all this. So uh, when uh, your bronchial tubes, uh, this is showing them in a little less close up detail, 
and shows uh, you know uh, kind of a little bit of what what's going on all through the lungs. But when those bronchial tubes are more irritated, they can be inflamed. Uh, inflammation is uh, how your body fights back against irritation or invasion. That's going on in the uh, the lining, very, very delicate lining, delicate enough to let oxygen and carbon dioxide cross through in, in the opposite directions. When that's going on, you uh, we can call it bronchitis. Uh, you have symptoms where you're coughing. Uh, normally, you don't cough at all, or you might have it every day. Actually, some people do, even when they're they're doing the their very best. Um, so, coughing up phlegm is a sign of sickness, which we will usually call we will often call bronchitis. If we do it only occasionally, it's acute bronchitis. It's here sometime, not all the time. If we do it over a long period of time, then it's uh, bron chronic bronchitis. It can be a symptom of COPD or other chronic lung disease. If chronic bronchitis is due to smoking, like Saj said, it might get a lot better after quitting smoking. We're no longer damaging those little delicate cilia. We're no longer uh, causing the mucous glands to make extra thicker smoking. Um, and uh, uh, as Saj said, uh, people are often coughing up more when those so they are getting back to work. They're reviving. And uh, but a uh, great majority of people who've quit smoking have seen the cough get worse for a while or maybe more. It's actually becoming more effective. That generally takes maybe a month, maybe a little longer to get much better. Not always, but in most cases. Um, and then for most people, there's less coughing and less or thinner, lighter mucus. But they will still have in many cases, flare-ups. So they'll get acute bronchitis as part of an exacerbation or a flare-up of their chronic lung disease. And then they've got to do something about it. So why are thick secretions a problem? Well, if uh, the airways are plugged up with mucus plugs, then it's harder for oxygen to get in, carbon dioxide to get out. You might have to work harder just to breathe because you have to move the air around uh, those uh, mucus plugs or through airways that aren't blocked and there's fewer of them. Coughing itself uses a lot of energy and germs stay in that mucus instead of being washed out and into you know dissolving in your saliva uh, imperceptibly where you're not even aware of it, going down to be digested in the stomach. They stay in those bronchial tubes and um, which are moist and warm and a wonderful place for germs to grow and cause infections, causing lung infections and exacerbations. You want to get them out of there. And these pictures show real-time images of when we bronchoscopic uh, uh, um, procedures. And actually that is mucus that's in the airway there. And you can see it, it's remarkable how thick it is and how hard it can be to suction. So it's it's remarkable how it's there and these images show it perfectly. And so thick secretions are, are a problem and they can make it really, really difficult with the mucus plugging. So why does just coughing harder not work well? And then we'll talk about what works better. Well, most of our bronchial tubes, those are airways, are tiny. So if you look down at the bottom of that graphic where you see the smaller tubes, those are enormously bigger than the real bronchial tubes are. They can't be seen in any the smallest ones without a microscope. They're that small. And, uh, and they're more collapsible than the bigger tubes because not only are they smaller, but they have less or no cartilage around them to keep them open. They're too small and delicate. So when you cough, you're squeezing your lungs really, really hard, and that might blast some enough air through the biggest tubes, maybe just the uh, windpipe, the trachea itself, to get some mucus out of there. But those smaller tubes that also have mucus in them collapse and won't let anything out. So it's kind of self-defeating. So yeah, you need to cough hard sometimes, but we need to use some strategy to move that mucus up into the bigger tubes from the smaller ones to get the mucus out, okay? And we're gonna talk about 
how to do that. But otherwise, coughing hard can cause lots of pain. It actually can physically hurt with little gain. You're not getting the airways uh, effectively cleared. Let's go into how we can do better. What does work? Well, one thing is relatively easy, hydrate. That is, drink enough fl uh, fluids um, to keep those secretions thinner. If you're uh, underhydrated, those secretions, uh, that mucus and other junk in it, stay thicker and you can't move them. Open the airways. If you have chronic lung disease, you may have medications, your inhalers and some other things that can keep those airways more open, easier to get the plugs out, just like a bigger pipe uh, under your sink uh, is easier to plunge that stuff out. Uh, use strategy, learn more efficient guided coughing techniques, which we're going to go into. Devices, some devices help some people uh, quite a lot. Uh, they, uh, uh, and some of them are very easy to use and we'll, we'll, we'll show uh, more about that. Airway openers, that's what bronchodilators, that's literally what that word means. We like to use Greek and Latin, uh, but uh, that's what they are, airway openers. So if you've got one for quick relief, you uh, very likely have uh, something that you use every day that keeps them open and less inflamed all the time. The long acting ones that you take once or twice a day, um, use them every day. You don't take more, you don't take less. You just keep using the right amount that is prescribed for you. And the short acting ones, which you have in uh, probably, you might have uh, most likely have an, an inhaler that you can use on an as needed basis. You might also have a nebulizer. Um, try to take some, even if you're using your long acting ones regularly, and you've used the uh, inhaler or nebulizer before, if it hasn't been in more than an, uh, less than an hour uh, before you're doing your, your huff coughing or your, your coughing techniques or using your device, take you know at least one more puff or something more to get your airways as open as you can to uh, make what you're doing more successful and effective. Yes, and as Ed mentioned, it's much more difficult to move secretions through a smaller tube. So when it's when it's inflamed and obstructive, so before the bronchodilator, as opposed to coughing and clearing the secretions after the bronchodilator, it's much more open and it's much easier um, passage for the secretions to move. Right. Now, I talked about uh, how just coughing as hard as you can, coughing your brains out, isn't going to get your airways thoroughly clear. So what do we do about that? Well, guide the cough or the the effort, the hard, uh, the exhalation toward different airways. Start way less forcefully, just a little more than a norm, just a little more effort than a normal exhalation. Uh, how do you know when it's enough? You will feel, we won't know ourselves, you know, I'll, you'll be the only one that knows. You will feel a little rattling going on. And that's probably going on in the smaller airways. So push it out for a certain length of time, not as hard as you can and not as long as you can, but long enough to get it moving and you will feel it and know it. A, then a little more forceful and a little shorter time for the middle-sized airways. You're moving it up. Remember that graphic that showed the smaller tubes and middle-sized and then the biggest ones all the way up to the windpipe. You push it up there, then a couple of hard exhalations and then a hard cough when it feels loose enough to cough it out. This works. People do it all the time and it really, really helps. Uh, don't waste energy by coughing more and more and harder and harder. When nothing's moving, you'll be too tired then to get it out effectively. Start at the beginning, use strategy. And then there are devices. Um, we call them, we in the, uh, you know, the, the professionals, we call this oscillatory positive expiratory pressure or PET for short devices. Um, there are a number of different ones out there in the market. We'll show some pictures of the most common, but they, um, they do two things when you blow into them because 
of a little back pressure because you're you're uh, blowing out, uh, exhaling against a certain amount of resistance. That back pressure that you're creating keeps those tubes open. In fact, opens them opens them up a little more, especially the little tiny ones. Okay, we're using strategy. We're using what we know to get the best results. And when you blow into them, they vibrate one way or another for different reasons mechanically, but that's the effect that they all have. And that uh, oscillates, shakes up that mucus, shakes it loose, then it's easier to get it out of there. And these are uh, pictures of the most common ones. Uh, they can have brand names. There are some others with other brands. They all work about the same way. Which one to use depends on cost, availability with your uh, provider, uh, or your personal preference. Some people like one better than another, but they work more or less the same way. Acapella, Flutter, Aerobica, and others. How to use them? Uh, there are videos that they all have. I've seen YouTube videos for every one of those that I uh, that we showed in the graphics. Um, other brands, I'm sure, have them as well. But in general, you start, as I said, with albuterol, the uh, quick airway opener or quick reliever, it can be called, to open up those pipes. Uh, now, if you've uh, just used quite a lot of it, don't do it again. But if you haven't used it in a while, good to start with that. Then each type of brand has its own instructions for use in cleaning, but you will generally, Inhale normally, not as deep as you possibly can, but a kind of a deep breath, and then blow through that uh, device with a moderate amount of force for several seconds. How many? You know, it should be comfortable for you. If it's if you're working too hard, then you're doing too much. Okay, a little extra effort is good, but avoid blowing out as hard or as long as you can for to start and repeat. Not too fast. You don't want to hyperventilate, but comfortably 10 or more times according to the directions that come with the device. Then do some of that huff coughing that I talked about. Even if you've already done some, do it again because now that stuff's maybe a little looser from all that vibration and so on, but you want to start pushing it upward. If you feel some mucus rattling in your chest, cough it all the way up and repeat till you're clear. If no more is, com no more is coming up, and you don't feel like it's hanging in there and bothering you anymore, then you're done, okay? But up to 15 or 20 minutes, don't wear yourself out. How many times a day? Um, if you have mucus every day, you might wanna do it at least once a day, okay? Um, it could be twice. If you're getting sick and you're having a lot more thicker uh, colored mucus in your lungs, four times a day wouldn't be too much. If uh, if you're not getting better at home and you end up in the hospital, somebody's going to bring you one of those things about four times a day. So um, do it at home to avoid being in the hospital and getting better more quickly at home. And some of those devices you can use um, along with or in line with a nebulizer, but talk to your provider about that or your respiratory therapist and how to set it up because uh, there are some extra cleaning that you might need to do um, with the devices. And also, if after the 15 or 20 minutes, you still haven't got it out, but you feel something is in there, just continue on with your daily activity. Your body will slowly push that um, mucus up, the secretions up, and then eventually it'll work itself up where you'll be able to cough it out. Like Ed said, do not wear yourself out trying to cough that out. When it's ready to come out, it will come out. That's a good point, right? Because now you've gotten it looser and you've moved it a little bit along. Later on, it'll come up anyway. So uh, very good tip. Thanks. And uh, you can put all this together. Um, uh, you want to keep hydrating yourself. Now, if you have limited fluid intake, uh, you have, uh, you know, you tend to retain fluids um, and you're on instructions to limit your your uh, fluid intake uh, you don't want to um, you know uh, violate that 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 uh, that instruction okay keep your airways open regularly with your maintenance inhal inhalers and short acting inhalers 
uh, and uh, use huff coughing regularly. You don't have to spend 15, 20 minutes every time. Could be just spend a minute occasionally when you need to and you clear yourself out and go on about your business and then use the devices as needed. Maybe not every day, but when you need to, for, especially for acute flare-ups uh, or as scheduled, uh, this is gonna help you manage your secretion problem, your, your uh, mucus plugging problem a lot better and have better health and quite possibly a much better daily life. Uh, benefits for of effective lung secretion clearance. Uh, for chronic bronchitis, it means feeling better every day because you have the mucus every day. Fewer exacerbations or flare-ups. It really, it really can mean that, uh, staying out of the hospital more. More energy, more active, better social life. Um, people will tell us that they don't go places because they're always coughing up mucus. They're embarrassed. If you clear it up at home, uh, you can go out, uh, you can go to church, or you can go to a restaurant with your family, that sort of thing. Uh, it can improve your appetite. Loss of appetite and losing too much weight is a problem for quite a few people with chronic lung disease. This can help with that. And for acute episodes, absolutely better relief, getting back to your normal baseline, your better baseline quicker. That's what you want. This can help get you there. So thank you for your attention to this issue. We hope this video has been helpful for you if you uh, have chronic lung disease or someone that you care for. Thanks again for taking the time to watch our video and the presentation. For more information about Moreland Health or our pulmonary rehab program, please go to morelandhealth.com. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.